Welcome to this Mass Media video on graph transformations. To start with, let's take a look at type 1 here, which is of the form y equals f of x plus k. Now, for the transformation y equals f of x plus k, for k being greater than 0, so for k greater than 0, then we can see f of x plus k is f of x moved k to the left. Okay, so moved k units to the, to the left. So this is f of x moved k units to the left. Okay, and f of x minus k is f of x moved k units to the right. Okay, and in this example here, we've got f of x is equal to x squared minus 4. So f of x is equal to x squared minus 4. And what we've also got here is y equals f of x plus 2. So we subtract 2 from the x coordinates of f of x to get y equals f of x plus 2. And we can see that here. So it crossed at 2. Notice here now we subtract 2 from that. It, costs, it crosses at 0 there. And same here, it crossed at minus 2. So if you subtract 2 there, you get minus 4. So that gives us everything we need there for type 1. Moving on to type 2 now, which is looking at the form of y equals f of x plus k. Now for the transformation of y equals f of x plus k, for k being greater than 0, so for k greater than 0, well, f of x plus k is f of x moved k units upwards. So this is f of x moved k units upwards. Okay, and if we have f of x, so f of x here minus k, so let's just rewrite that so it looks a bit neater here. So what we've got here is f of x minus k. Well, this is f of x moved k units downwards. Okay. Now in this example here, we have f of x. So f of x is equal to x squared minus 4. And what we've also got is y equals f of x plus 3. So all we simply do here is add 3 to the y coordinates of f of x to get y equals f of x plus 3. And we can see that here. So this curve, f of x, crossed through the y axis at minus 4. So if we add 3 to that, we obtain minus 1 there. Okay. So that gives us everything we need there for type 2. Let's move on now to take a look at type 3 here, which is of the form y equals a of f of x. Now, for the transformation y equals a of f of x here, well, if the absolute value, so if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then a f of x is f of x stretched vertically by a factor of a. Okay, so this is f of x stretched vertically by a factor of a. Okay. If the absolute value is between 0 and 1, so if the absolute value is between 0 and 1, then f of x is squashed vertically. f of x... is squashed vertically. And finally here, if a is less than 0, so if a is less than 0, then f of x is also reflected in the x-axis. So f of x is reflected in the 
in the x-axis. So if we take a look at this example here, we have f of x, again, equals x squared minus 4. And what we've also got here is y equals 2f of x. So in that case, this is a stretch vertically. So we multiply the y coordinates of f of x by 2 to get y equals 2 of f of x. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for type 3. Moving on to type 4 now, which is of the form y equals f of ax. So for the transformation of y equals f of ax, well here, if the absolute value of a, so if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then f of ax is f of x squashed horizontally. So this is f of x squashed horizontally. Okay, by a scale factor of a. So by a factor of a. If the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, so if the absolute value of a is between 0 and 1, then f of x is stretched horizontally. So this is stretched horizontally. And finally, if a is less than 0, then f of x is reflected in the y-axis. So this is reflected in the y-axis. Okay, and here we take a look at this example. Again, we've got f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 here. So if we've got y equals f of 2x, this is a squash horizontally, so we divide the x-coordinates of f of x by 2 or multiply by a half. And that gives us y equals f of 2x. So that gives us everything we need there for type 4. Let's just make a quick note here on graph transformations. For these transformations, any asymptotes need to be moved correspondingly. So don't forget any asymptotes that you've got, you also need to apply the transformations with those in mind. So let's note here, don't forget asymptotes. So don't forget any asymptotes. Of course, you might not always have asymptotes, but if you do, you need to take into account the asymptotes when you're applying your transformations. So don't forget any asymptotes. That's our first note here. The second note to make here is that a squash by a factor of a is equivalent to a stretch by a factor of 1 over a. So squash with factor a, so a squash with factor a is equivalent to a stretch by a factor of 1 over a. So that's equivalent to a stretch by a factor of 1 over a. And finally here, when we're drawing graph transformations, we only sketch important points. Okay, so we don't need to start drawing anything unnecessary. Just make sure to note any important points. So that gives us everything we need there for our quick note on graph transformations. And finally, let's take a look now at combinations of transformations. So for combinations of transformations, it is easy to break them up and do them one step at a time. Make sure to do the bit in the brackets first. You can sketch the graph at each stage to help visualize the whole transformation. So for example here, we've got f of x equals x squared minus 4. Okay, and we can see that from our diagram here. And we also want to apply this transformation here, y equals 2 lots of f x plus 2. Well, first we need to apply the bit in the brackets. So applying that first here, we get this red curve, y equals f of x plus 2. And then we use this graph to draw the graph here of y equals 2f x plus 2. Okay, so that's always a good thing to do when applying combinations of transformations. 
It's important to note as well that these transformations can also be combined with modulus functions. So that gives us everything we need there, combinations of transformations, and that concludes this Mass Media video on graph transformations.